Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to another football video. Right, obviously you can tell by the title and the fun out this about my parent club and what I think the problems are and I'm going to talk about them problems but let's get straight down to this so guys you know what to do, give us a big fun fun up, you enjoy it, subscribe for more, thanks for watching and let's go. So the first one we're going to start off with and there is about seven issues in this bit, you know in this video alone, is Lil Mopay not clapping fans when he came off the pitch against Norwich City on Saturday. You know, you had the fans sing his name while his song. Did he deserve it? Probably not. Um, you know, he's missed a penalty and we'll get back down to that in a bit further in this video. But, and he missed a couple of opportunities that maybe shouldn't have missed. But, where I think Neil Mope and you will have had me say this anyway, if you saw my vlog, is the fact I think he's a bit arrogant. And a bit disrespectful, even though fans did clap him while he's coming off. Uh, completely blindsided the fans, and I would actually show you the full size of, of the North Stand. And he pretty much pretty much all of it. So, you know, Neil Mopay on that sort of end really is a sort of, you know, bit of a poor sportsmanship. And, you know, something has to get down a bit further in this video is the fact of, um, you know, it will be, um, you know, the fans' atmosphere. And as I said, we'll talk about that when we get a bit down in the video. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is the fact of what made the article today. And it does look like pretty much all over the media now. So, Graham Potter saying the fans are putting the players off why they shout shoot. Now it's no just you know it's no hiding secret that Brighton fans are frustrated with the likes of how many times we're getting a shot away when we could possibly get a bit more away, and um, we rather play the possession game and pass it around and out, end up losing the ball, and you all know what happens after you lose the ball. So you know it's got to be one of them things where it's currently on social media on the Brighton pages, and you know we ain't too happy about it. You know if. They ain't going to shoot, we're going to urge them to shoot. You know, any parent club would do that. But it's got to be a very frustrating thing that Graham Potter said that. And yet, probably we get the blame for drawing nil nil knowledge um, by the looks of things, squish out and shoot. If that's the case, then what's the fans' point of going? Um, you know, we pay good money for go watch them play. And it gets really, really frustrating when you're hearing the manager say stuff like that. By the looks of that report that I have read bits and pieces of, I'll put the main bit up on the screen, is the fact that he ain't taken responsibility for his own actions. Now, as I said, if you did watch the vlog, you can go back and watch the vlog on the channel. How poor we were in the first half, and I did stay around to half time before I went for a bathroom break. And the crowd was just pure silent from the Brighton end, and you know, I didn't hear one clap, and that's how poor we were. And the second half, we're a bit more, a bit better. Um, but, you know, it still doesn't really change the mind of, you know, why did it take so long for us to get going? It's a game with two halves, and I'll say that all year round. But, you know, no matter what game we're going to, it's a, t a game of both halves, and you don't turn up for one, and you only turn up for the second. It can really be a bit of frustrating for the fans. And by telling us we're putting our players off by telling them not to shoot, it really does sort of get to me a bit where how can you be frustrated as fans for telling the players to shoot where all you want to play basically is the possession game. Uh, I just want to make it clear at this point I'm neither a potter in or potter out at this point. But, and it's going to be going worse and worse in this video. So if you're a positive Brighton fan, please put your positive comments down below. Because I really would like to hear them. But yeah, that one just really got to me today as I read it. Um, Graham Potter's basically saying the fans are putting the players off by, telling, by sh shouting out, shoot, when they have a chance to shoot. It Perhaps if the players did that when they had the chance to shoot, we wouldn't maybe have to do it so much. But, you know, Graham Potter has got to take responsibility for the results. And stop blaming us fans, which I think he is trying to do. I think he's running out of excuses. And it really gets frustrating. And as I said, it's only going to get worse. So let's jump on to the next topic. Our last home goal, I think, was on the 26th of January. So we're coming into, we're in April now. We've just played our first game in April. 
and it's going to be a really, really frustrating time for Brighton fans. Uh, you know, we've only scored, I don't think, yeah, I think we scored last time this season as well. But anyway, last time goal on the 26th of June, and you got the big ball upstairs saying we're a top 10 side, we're the top 10 this, we're a top 10 that. I'm not seeing it. You know, let's go back to the first topic. I just want to slightly touch up on it. Now, a lot of the um, a lot of the fans were saying about the atmosphere, and as I said, we talk about a bit more about it at the minute. It's one of the best atmospheres I think that like we've had at the MX for quite a while, and you know, to actually say to actually now my pay not to clap it off for the you know uh, the fans' atmosphere. That's what I find disrespectful as well. But I said we talk more about that when we get down to it. As I said, the last home goal was on the 20... I think it's the 26th of July. can't remember who it's against. But fans are getting frustrated by the lack of goals in the home side. I can understand where it's going on social media. You know, it's a wake-up call for us. But, you know, we've had, what, about five windows now where we're screaming for a striker. Got Neil Mopay in. And Neil Mopay, to me, is uh, struggling for help. And screaming for it. And Danny Welbeck, a tally striker he is, I think he had a better game on Saturday against Norwich than what Neil Mope did. And in the age range, that shouldn't have happened. But, you know, fair play for Welbeck. I just think we may need a star striker. And I know we've got one coming in at the end, uh, start of next season. To me, it doesn't mean anything. I've seen so many players coming forward into the Premier League. And not managed to cut it, so that's going to be a very interesting player to see at the um, you know, next season. This leads me on to the next topic young players are not getting a chance now. Young players now, always obviously, if you know me from the Brighton pages or you know, whatever else, you always hear it you know, young players are doing well, players like Ferguson, you know, should they really be should they really get a chance? I mean. Game against Norwich, I'm not sure of Ferguson's situation, whether he's injured or... Norwich, with that game, no, I, know, I know how big and how important it was for Norwich to... Uh, sorry, for Brighton to go win that game. But surely I don't play, should be getting a chance at that game at Premier League level. You know, that's where they want to go. That's where the obviously manager wants them to play, but... Giving them 20 minutes to the end ain't really going to do much, I don't think. If you're going to give them a real chance, put them in the starting 11. Let's see what it's got. Pardon me. And uh, that's something else that's just frustrating me. We always hear about young players, and yet they're being the judge of the young players. Surely it should be the other way around. Now, this leads on to the second subject. Uh, no, this ain't the second subject. Well, it's about seven. But anyway, players sh- should be dropped. Now, Neil Mope, and I'm sorry I have to keep picking on Neil Mope, but I will say it and I will play in a minute. Neil Mope, I think he's missed four out of all penalties this season. Four, and I think he's only taken about, I don't know how many he's taken. But anyway, missing four players, uh, sorry, missing four penalties, and, you know, a really frustrating time for the Brighton fans. Now, surely. I don't think that Neil Mope is a bad player. I just think it's maybe time for him to call bench and one of the jump players to start coming through and seeing what they got. And uh, let's see what happens with that. But surely Neil Mope needs to be dropped. I know a lot of you fans might not agree with that because of you know the reserves we got. But come on, let's give the young players a chance. There is one other thing I just thought of, and I'll try and think of it as we go through this video. Fan, right, now this fan's atmosphere. Oh yeah, sorry, before we do fan's atmosphere, just one remember. Where do I think our performance has dropped? Now, I didn't actually go to Old Trafford when we were playing Man United at Old Trafford, but oh, there's something happened, and this is why I say it's behind closed doors. Because we did play okay at Old Trafford, okay, we lost, I think it was 2-0, but... We played ever so well. And then we come up against Burnley. Now, that's one of the worst performances I've seen Brighton at the MX. Burnley came out fighting, same as Norwich did. And no disrespect to 
Right, um, but now you should have the odd opportunity. Uh, you know, so they are coming out fighting, they're fighting for survival. But I reckon something's happened between the May Night game and the Burnley game at the Annex. And I think there's something there that's not quite uh, been right. Azuma didn't look interested since the, um, you know, after the main after main night game, I think he played at Old Trafford. And, uh, you know, there's something not looking right with the team. I reckon something's happened behind closed doors. And that's why I still remain, I do think it's happened behind closed doors. And that's another player that did get dropped on Saturday and deserved to be dropped is Bazuma. Now, the fans' atmosphere, as I said, on Saturday, Norwich was one of the best atmospheres we've had. Not the best, best atmosphere, but one of the best we've had in the last month or so. You know, let's not beat around our bush. And that relies back to Neil my pay, um, you know, not clapping the fans. But you really have got to... With the fans' atmosphere, I can't say there's nothing wrong with the fans' atmosphere. But get behind the team. If we're not playing the football, do they deserve our support? You know, I'll, we try our best, but we can only push the team so far, and the rest is up to them. And, you know, this is where Graham Potter's got to find a bit of leverage with the fans, that we can only take so much as well. We're the ones that have to put the half money up and, you know, pay costs from Go Hero and everywhere. And I do respect the Brighton fans that follow him Hero and everywhere as well. But, you know, I see so many fans, like, especially round about this sort of time. I ain't said it so much this month, obviously, because we're just out in, but it's about the fans' atmosphere. That's where some of the fans that think the atmosphere ain't up to scratch, I, you know, I don't think it's up to scratch, but we're getting back up there. But the players have got to put the player part too. Fans won't keep us singing from all the way through if the team's not performing that's just the way it works in football i mean you look at arsenal under uh in night emery i mean okay the emery stadium can't get much for the atmosphere because the way it's built but you know it just goes up it extends out goes up in the air but it's one of these things where i think we should have got cut one in my pound saturday and you know the rest of the players and you know as i said the fans can only play so much and the rest is up to the team. The team performs, then obviously we're seeing more. If the team don't perform, then obviously fans begin to lose confidence. That's another thing with these fans as well, though. And that's not just us fans. That's every football fan in the world. If your team's not performing, you lose as much confidence as what the team does in their playing skills. But it does happen, so, you know, we can't go too much on the fans. And that's where I think Grandpa may be a bit, a little bit wrong in by blaming the fans that we're putting the team up by shouting and shoot. We want it we want them to shoot because we want someone to sing about and maybe, you know, chant about but, you know, as I said, that's just a fan's atmosphere. Now the last topic I'm gonna touch on is now my page penalty miss. Now <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. If you watched the vlog my vlog, you would have actually seen me um, penalty miss. And I'll put it up on the uh, cards and I'll make it appear at the end of this video as well. I do think that none of us shouted when that penalty was taken. The crowd was silent. The only people that stirred anything was the Norwich fans. And I ain't got to blame the Norwich fans for scoring the penalty. With Neil Mopay missing that penalty under pure silence of the crowd. Are you blaming us for missing that penalty as well? Uh, the next penalty taker, you know, maybe sh should come in now. I don't think it should be Groves. I think maybe it should rotate a bit more. But And that's another thing that's got me grandpa. Apparently, don't know who the se second penalty taker is. Surely you should know that by now. But anyway, I just want to make this video to address some of the problems at Brighton. And, uh, you know, to actually make aware that we are aware of all these problems going on. But anyway, guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.